Fong. Welcome to part 18 of the short series of the Pope Francis visit. This is the UN on top of Mount Hermon and we are continuing here with a little background about Mount Hermon and the UN to get an idea of the symbolism of the Pope visiting this area and I'll show it to you. That, um, coming up we're going to go to um, the UN headquarters in New York City and take a look at all of that. There's so much to see. All right, hope you like it. So this is the place where the fallen angels landed, the place where ancient Baal worship and blood sacrifice took place, and a place that has been spiritually marked as evil. And so then it's a little bit curious to think of Jesus going up to this place and saying, upon this rock I will build this church. And then that church turned into the evil, um, the evil empire of the Vatican, who basically took Joshua and sort of turned him into a fictional character with a different name and you know sort of rewrote some of his allegiances so now we have we see um, him having allegiances to these places which are extremely suspicious in 19 in, in 1666 Louis I think that's the 14th of France authorized the building of an observatory in Paris to measure longitude this is the beginning of the Paris zero meridian believe it or not according to the Paris zero meridian Mount, Mount Hermon in the ancient territory of the Dan and the Danites is located at 33 degrees east of the Paris zero meridian longitude and 33 degrees north of the equator latitude. The 33rd degree became an important part of Freemasonry. Now the Catholics tried to keep uh, Freemasonry um, officially separate from Catholicism by saying they would excommunicate anybody, but that was just all just a show. They're all in the same boat. They all, each of them, they have an oar. You know, they, they do fight amongst themselves. The houses of control fight amongst themselves, but basically they're all in the same boat. Probably due to a history that dates back to the Knights Templar, the French Moravian dynasty, and their family ties to the Danites. See our chapter on Dan in the Guardians of the Grail. So this is a favorite uh, scripture for a lot of people who are talking about the end times right now and they are using the prophecy this is prophecy that is written by the Vatican so what we have to do is we have to realize that these Nephilim that fell they are they call themselves gods and you can believe that if you want to but I choose not to they are long livid I, I think there is something that we can call a god but I think it's way way above all of these jokesters who came down here and um, called themselves gods among us as primitive or early primitive people. I don't think they are gods. <clears throat> so what I want to say is that if you, uh, whenever you're thinking about prophecy, you need to realize who wrote the prophecy. So we'll keep that in mind while we read this. But as the days of Noah, there will also be so the coming of uh, coming of the Son of Man. For in the days of Noah, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark, and they did not know until the flood came and took them all away. Well, they are planning, they're planning a, uh, a tidal wave. And do you think that they have enough technology to create this? I, I do. I think they have enough technology to create this. The only way that they wouldn't be able to create this is if there were enough good guys on the ground. I think there's a civil war between the military, the positive and the negative military and other um, houses of control on the planet. And that would be causing the interference. Otherwise, they should completely be able to create a big wave. It, in these days, uh, if you if you study Zachariah Sitchin, he's, his theory is that uh, the ice cap shifted and fell into the ocean, and that caused the big wave, and that the Anunnaki knew that was going to happen, and so they tried to leave they tried to leave mankind out of it, but then they fought amongst themselves, and Enki ended up telling his um, offspring Nish Nipishtim about the flood and instructed him to build an ark that would tumble, and uh, that all worked apparently very well and it was recorded in the in the tablets uh, a different story of course was told by the Vatican the Vatican includes the story of of uh, you know God tries to save the people well Enlil was actually Yahweh and he and he didn't he did not try to save the people he was against trying to save the people Enki tried to save the people and then the Vatican version also puts a heavy dose of human guilt into that it has nothing to do with human guilt it has to do with the Ice Age all right, well, this writer of this article does cut to the chase here about that um, what in their prophecy, what they are predicting is uh, another Messiah. So they wrote it. They're going to fulfill it. It has to do with the UN and it has to do with the Pope. And that's why we're over here talking about Mount Hermon. 
So I'm not sure exactly which path this rider gets to this, but I tend to agree that they are going to have a Messiah come out and um, they also in, in, a, in an environment of fear and they will try to um, create, this, create these prophecies. Okay, so back in Manhattan, let's take a quick look at the shape of this building here. From the side, it looks pretty strange, but the this main this this main heading here, and they do it twice. They're showing you the direction. This is a two zero nine heading, which is a nine. It's a nine eleven gateway. Sorry, sorry to make that mouth sound. Sorry. Okay, uh, I'm gonna pull this farther out. All right. Well, just to show you where this line goes, it kind of it kind of cuts off um, Roanoke Island and um, goes through South Carolina uh, or um, North Carolina, really. So I don't know. I don't know. Probably it is significant. I just need more time to look at the line. All right. So in the simple and English gematria, UN equals I and NASA and some other some other things but these are probably your most important esoteric connections okay so after the UN the Pope is going to go to the, a multi-faith service because he's everybody's Pope not just a Catholics Pope at the National September 11th Memorial Museum so you just grab this you throw it right in here and you see first of all we have a, a, a 9 and a 14 and if you add a 9 to a 14 you end up with a 23 which is again a 923 so even though this happens on the 925 date, they are still pointing at the 923. I, um, I, I did do the Pope's uh, birth numbers, and I think that he has um, 923 and 927 heavily in his numbers. So, um, so something's up with 923. I guess I don't have to tell you that, but down here we have a 23 and a 9. It's an upside down 9, but it's a 623, and we saw this. We saw this recently in Gematria, and I said, oh, we should remember this, and now I've already forgotten it. Okay, well, also we have here the 86 and the 68 number that I've been talking about having to do the stock market and the and the Bride of Christ. Um, but also, this if you add that this way, this is an 11, and that's a 911 going that way. Same, with, same kind of thing here. There's a lot to say, of course, about the, the National September 11th Memorial and Museum. And, and this line that I've been talking about, the line that goes from the Georgia Guidestones right here, it goes straight up through the Washington Monument and straight up through the Freedom Tower. And that is, that's where the Pope's going to be. So he's going to be right on this line. And this line is uh, 44 degrees um, heading going going north it's a different heading going south but the important thing one of the many important things about this is that for one thing the Freedom Tower this installation you probably realize this anybody who's making it to my videos this is this is an Orion construction this is the belt of Orion right here so that's one of the important things another important thing is that in the star maps found all over the world, and I learned this from uh, Wayne Herschel, and he has a great book called Hidden Records, which you can um, get on Amazon, and he has a great website that you can study for free, hiddenrecords.com, and he has found these star maps all over the world, and what it basically boils down to is you have three hills or pyramids or some other kind of thing like that which represent the star of Orion, the three stars of Orion. Those point towards the seven hills of the Pleiades, which in our case is the Seven Hills of Washington, D.C., over here. Back out, and I'll show it to you. So there's symbolic hills for Washington, D.C. And then in, in, the Egyptian, uh, in the Egyptian star maps, the Pleiades are formed into a leg of Taurus, and it actually forms a W, which is another source, possibly, of the, of the 23 almost as if it's a return of the Pleiadians. Hopefully the good Pleiadians. I think there's good Pleiadians. But what I want to say is, so there's the seven hills here. The seven hills symbolize the Pleiades, and they point towards, in the sky, they point towards the Star of Ra. 
which here on our east coast is symbolized by the Georgia Guidestones. So this is a large star map, and this is mirrored all over. This, this happens again and again and again all over the world. And you can tell it's important because they've just they've gone to a lot of trouble. It goes right through these power centers. So if you haven't heard about these star maps, it's because they didn't want you to know. So go ahead and just be a rebel and learn about that. Now this star map, ours on the east coast, on our east coast, goes even farther. If you follow the line straight out, and it's kind of hard to see which line it is, but if you follow this line straight out, it goes, you know, and this is a straight line that goes through the, right through the middle of, this, of the Freedom Tower, and that I found, and I found this line. Someone might have found it before me, but I didn't find any references to it when I found it. Anyway, I also found that it connects to ancient Babylon. So I'm going to pause this so we can take a look over there. All right, so we'll come over here, and we'll s this is the area where they're, where they're reportedly destroying all kinds of of artwork and ancient. Oh, I'm going to have to wait for this to load. Hold on. So while we're waiting for that to load over there, the reason why I'm showing you ancient Babylon is because it lines up with this whole line, and we see that the Pope is basically going every place on this line except for the Georgia Guidestones. All right, stay tuned for part 19 where we are going to go to hit the next thing on his itinerary, which is the school called, I think it's called Queen of Angels, September 25th, and all of the numbers and everything that you need to know about that. Um, thanks for watching.